listeners, uh, welcome to our very first Wind Therapy podcast. This podcast is dedicated to women motorcycle riders, why we ride, what we ride and our backstories. Um, and this shows for all women riders around the world to inspire, motivate, encourage and empower. I'm really excited to introduce the first person that I'm going to talk to in this podcast. This lady moved to Western Australia four years ago didn't know a soul in Western Australia. So, uh, you know, that takes a bit of guts. Uh, she's 54, works in a mine as a dump truck, water cart and loader operator, eight days on and six days off. She's nicknamed there the pocket rocket because she's only five foot tall and never stops coming up with adventures. She has two adult kids and both of those kids are in the mining field as well. She doesn't have any pets because she's all about the freedom to ride now. Doesn't own a car, but she has got two motorbikes. I'd really like to introduce Kathy Thatcher to you all for our first uh, episode of Wind Therapy. Hey, Kathy, how are you doing? Oh, fabulous. Thanks, me. A bit nervous, but you know. <laughs> it is exciting and I just got goosebumps when you said that. I Something I've been thinking about for a long, long time and I must say the feedback and response that I've had to other women motorcycle riders when I've sort of broached this idea has been absolutely amazing um, and I'd like to actually thank all of those people that have given me suggestions, have put their hand up for interviews um, and have been so encouraging. So I'm really excited as well. So thank you very much for being my guinea pig <laughs> and um, you know, this is just a casual conversation, trying to get to know you a little bit better. And as I mentioned to you before we started recording today, I'm really inspired by you. And that's why I've chosen you for our first interview, um, just to get to know you a little bit better, what you're all about, and to also talk about where you're heading as well in, um, in this field of women motorcycle riders. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you do for a living? Um, and how does your career help you or hinder you with your riding? Well, I have had a bit of a corporate sort of background with sales, office management, that sort of stuff. But when I came to WA, I wanted to get into mining and just completely change my life, which I've totally managed to do. So after mm. a lot of applying, I finally got a start on a mine. I've been in three mines now and um, I'm very lucky in the job I've got. It's actually another rider who put me forward for it. She was working there. And uh, from going down, to driving a articulated dump truck, they've taught me now to operate the loaders, which is super exciting and uh, a lot of fun. And um, water car, yeah. I've got my truck license, so I've done a little bit of that for them as well. I mm -hmm. thought I would have a lot more time for riding, but I don't. I get mm -hmm. home and I've missed my partner. I want to be with him. I've got uh, a million things to do just like this. There's just so much to do mm -hmm. and I'm forever organising women rider events. So um, I probably have a little less time than I thought I would going into this career, but it is offering me... Um, in the same sense, a lot of freedom. I have a lot of weekdays off as well as one weekend. So, yeah, it's just... It's wow. Yes. So, so you were in corporate sort of career before the mining industry. So, it's a total change of career for you. It is. And I think that's why it was so hard to get into because I think they read my resume and just went, she will, she will yeah. be bored. Right. So, when it, that mm. finally went to me, I went and dumbed down my resume. So instead of managing a national call centre, I answered the phones in one. So I, I really did mm -hmm. take oh, off that management level and just tried to make everything a lot simpler. And um, yeah, they, then I got my start, which was really good, really exciting. That's really and good. And the thing is, I earn better yeah. money now than I ever did in those careers. And I only work. <laughs> oh, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah, I only work half a year. That's wonderful. Yes, yeah, so I suppose from what you've said, you know, not having that pressure, I suppose, from the corporate world has given you a little bit more brain space to, to you know, do these things for women writing. Absolutely. I was tired. Mm. I was very I was very just tired of the, the pressure, the sales targets, everything else. I had, I'd lost all my interest in mm. it and I'd just rediscovered writing. You know, and I'd, re I'd discovered these adventures that we were going on and realised mm. we're not here for a long time. 
and I'm going to definitely mm-hmm. make sure we're here for a good time. So, yep. Oh, I hear you. I hear you. Oh, that's wonderful. So how long have you been riding for? Well, I got my licence when I was 17. So back then in um, I was in the Northern Territory. After two years, mm-hmm. I then moved to Queensland. So after two years, you were able to go and apply for your big licence. And, of course, I'm a very tiny statue person. So when I went in at 19 years of age and asked for my big licence, they said, um, well, what are you riding, love? <laughs> and I said, oh, my <laughs> boyfriend's CV750 or uh, some bike I made up. And so they gave me my <laughs> big licence and I jumped outside, jumped on my posty bike and went home. I've owned a few bikes, but when I was 21, I was actually in a pillion in a high-speed accident and I couldn't mm-hmm. get back on my bike. So I completely lost my nerve and uh, it was a pretty severe accident. So I didn't ride for the next 30 years mm. and it wasn't until I came to WA that I was I actually travelled over here with my older sister and she is obsessed with motorbike riding and well-known in the dirt riding, I suppose, off-road riding arena of women. So she travelled mm-hmm. over here in, with me uh, on her adventure around Australia and she got me back into riding. We found a little, oh, what are they, just a little 250 cruiser I yep. got on that and it took a long time to get my confidence back because that, mm-hmm. that accident had really affected me. But I eventually I bet, in. yeah. Yeah, so I... I started riding. Um, I then joined a women's group, but it was a, it was a bit too fast for the stage I was at. So I joined a learner group and yep. got my confidence back. Yeah. Wow. Gosh, you hear a lot of stories about people, especially as pillion riders, I think, where they have had these significant accidents. Um, and then years down the track, yeah, they pick up a bike and, and become like the sole rider and you know, their stories are amazing. Um, But that confidence building is really difficult, isn't it? Just taking that step to build your confidence back and and to overcome that fear is a massive accomplishment. It really is. I think you need to make sure that you find the right people to help you through that stage. So Mm. by joining a learner group, their focus was on doing it at our speed you know, making sure we're comfortable, mm-hmm. giving us those tips, making sure we weren't riding out of our comfort zone or too fast. And I mm-hmm. told them that my fear of the long sweeping corners because that's what the accident was on, you know. And um, even mm-hmm. to this day, I still pull back a tiny bit on those corners. But I got a lot better, done a lot of training, um, mm-hmm. you know, but the, they got me through. And I think at the time I had met a lot of women and I was putting on my photos. I, we just started going on adventures. I'm saying to the guys, well, let's do overnighters. Let's do this. Let's do that. And we started going yeah. on all these adventures. And then the women that I'd met started messaging me saying, um, what are these rides you're going on? We're, we're not seeing these events. And I said, oh, I'm riding with the guys. I'm riding mm. with the learners. And they're like, well, I can shadow. I can shadow. So all these ladies I knew then joined yeah. the learner group. And it kind of exploded. And we started That's going great. on all these adventures. And yep. supporting yep. each other and, and building these amazing friendships. And then a couple of people said to me, you know, this is what um, we need for women. So that's when mm. the idea of GLOW started. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. We'll talk a little bit more about GLOW later on, but leaps and bounds. And, it's, yeah, it's just so inspiring. Yeah. So when, when you think back when you first started riding motorbikes, what's your first memory of motorbikes and how did you feel? Uh, my first memory was getting, well, I, I got this post bike. So I was living in Catherine in the Northern Territory at the time working as a barmaid um, mm-hmm. in a very interesting establishment. Catherine is very interesting. Oh, yeah. I love Catherine though. It's beautiful. But you are. <laughs> I went back a couple of years ago and that outdoor bar is still there and it hasn't changed. Anyway, there you so go. So I got this little Honda 90 and I would ride it to the pub and back every day. Um, it was very easy to ride, you know, those little Honda 90s. You can't go wrong on those. But then we decided uh, yeah. she was a bit rough. So the boys at the pub, and I was only 18, so I was a big girl. They all looked after me. Um, they took nice. my bike and stripped it down and painted it gloss black put this big shiny 90 down the side and we called her Charlotte the Harlot and we were just waiting for her to Oh, cool. We were just we were waiting for her to grow up, you see. Uh, yep, yep. Yeah. 
Oh, that's great. That's a lovely memory actually to have. Yeah. And that's a story. We'll have to have a bit more of a talk about that when we get together yeah. next. You have some good stories about Catherine, I'm sure. Um, is there any particular life event that influenced you to get your license or was it just something that was, you know, going to be a bit easier for you for transport? Oh, no, it was quite simply that I wouldn't allow my older sister to outdo me on anything. <laughs> that, that's it. That was oh, older sisters are the best, rivalry, though. My dear, that that is all there is to it. I'm <laughs> if she could do it, I could do oh. it. Um, oh, she cool. sounds like a pretty cool sister, though. Yeah. yeah she is. <laughs> I mean, who isn't? Any chick that rides a motorbike is pretty cool in my book. Yeah. (laughs) So you've introduced us to Charlotte the Harlot. Tell us a little bit more about the bikes you've owned and the bike that you're riding right now. Well, um, back then I just went through three posty bikes uh, because I did move around Australia a lot. So I would sell one Mm -hmm. and move on my car. And I've always gone on my grand adventures, even from, you know, the age of, 16 I started so I went through three posted mm-hmm. bikes but then I was in the accident um so then when I came to WA I got the Virago 250 again like I said I'm mm-hmm. really tiny so it's very hard for me to find a bike I can reach the ground on so I got the Virago mm. 250 you know I think I paid $1,300 for it so I was looking for a bike I could drop because I knew I was going to because my confidence was so bad mm. and I, I found the right mm. bike you wouldn't have noticed another drop mm-hmm. on it did you drop it much? Occasionally. Actually, no. Look, I've been to the truth. Before that, I was on my sister's XT250. Oh, they're awesome bikes. I had one of them. She still got a very embarrassing video of me trying to blame the scene, <laughs> dropping that, that I've threatened her if she ever puts on social media. We're over. <laughs> I might um, have to talk to her. Um, you know, so, yeah, she, she sort of got me going on the XT, but I just kept dropping it because I literally couldn't trust. We put 10 litres of water in each penny up. To try and lower the bike. Oh wow! And I still kept dropping wow. it. Wow! So we finally we found this little old Virago, which was exactly what I needed. And once I got my confidence and I was starting to ride well, then I sat on a Vulcan S650, and I mm-hmm. just instantly fell in love. I'd sat on so many bikes trying to find mm-hmm. something that I could get my legs around and not lay my leg on the exhaust. Mm-hmm. But because my confidence is so fragile, then. I need my feet firmly on the ground, not my toes. I mean, lots of women mm. ride with just their toes on the ground. Um, mm. I just didn't have that confidence. So I had, yeah, but I sat yeah. on this Vulcan and just instantly fell in love. I went, I have to have this bike. I bought myself a brand yeah. new bike. I had to move the foot pegs because they, they're like adjustable, these bikes. And so I moved the foot pegs mm. to the closest position. I replaced the handlebars with what the, the reduced reach ones and I got mm-hmm. the reduced reach seat. So I sat so comfortably mm. on that bike and um, fell yeah. in love. Now that little bike is only um, three and a half, heading for four years old, and she's got – over 72,000 kilometres on her. Wow. Yeah, gosh. I have exactly the same bike um, and I love my Vulcan. Um, did the same thing you did. You know, it's so adjustable, got the extended reach handlebars. Um, I am tippy toes on it because I don't have the spe- specific seat that you've mm. got, but it is such a forgiving bike. Like you can ride it like a sports bike if you want to, or you can ride it like a cruiser. Uh, it's awesome on fuel. If you're in the wrong gear, it doesn't matter. It's it just such a forgiving bike. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, there's so many bikes out there. I think Kawasaki really should be applauded for the Vulcan um, 650S because it's fits everyone's it needs, does. really. Because um, it's so adjustable. Yeah. You've got, you've got reduced mm. reach standard and it, and um, extended reach. So you can adjust yeah. it to, from a five-foot-tall person to a six-foot-four person can all ride the same bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And do you have a nickname for your bike? Um, yes. Her name is, well, my name, <laughs> her name is Ebony because she's, I'm very yep. pale as well, so I'm very white. So she, this is Ebony and I yep. and we're riding together. Oh, perfect. perfect harmony. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Mine's Bruce because he looks like Batman and I think my husband's really embarrassed that I ride a motorbike called Bruce, but I don't care. I love him. He looks after me. So, yeah, it's, it's interesting when you talk to people about what they name their bikes and, and the backstory to that as well. Yeah, so, oh, oh look, I can't wait to actually meet Ebony in person, which, um, yeah, yeah, one day, one day. 
But around the maintenance of your bike, do you do any of the maintenance yourself? Um, I do do my oil changes. But mm-hmm. kind of, I, I do kind of leave it at that. I haven't been in a position yep. to really do that, but I do have a partner now who's absolutely wonderful and amazing and makes sure I'm safe all the time, looks after me uh, to the extent where he won't pull my bike apart, but he will say, for goodness sake, go and get a new chain of sprocket and then, and then be yep. from going out on my bike until it's done. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Look, I, I, I do the same. Um, I watch my husband change the oil in my bike. <laughs> yeah, look, he's the same. You make sure that, that everything is okay and safe on the bike. To the point he's actually got a little device that does the oil, uh, not the oil, the tyre pressure. So if I'm riding along and I lose tyre pressure, there's an alarm that'll go oh, wow. off. And although, yeah, although the other day I just, just I was just about to do a big ride. I think we were on our way up to Warhope and I just got the, the bike registered and was riding home and I was thinking, oh, this is feeling a bit weird. Another tip for the Vulcan. I thought, oh, it's feeling a little bit sloppy. And I thought, no, the tyre gauge is all right. Um and I stopped and my back tyre was dead flat. <laughs> so, so the little gauge didn't work because the batteries had gone flat oh. in the in the little <laughs> things that go on the tyres. But the thought was there. But I was really impressed with the Vulcan. Like I was doing 100 k's an hour and it was still handling really well with a dead flat back yeah. tyre. So there you go. Yeah. yeah, I think it's important for us to be aware of how to maintain our bike or what to look out for on our bike so that we are riding safely. Yeah, we are so, very yeah. lucky here. We've had different people at different sort of stages run maintenance workshops, especially in the different groups. But mm. now we've got a lady here who has a motorcycle clothing store um, and she is in Glow. She's a rider. And her husband mm-hmm. um, runs little workshops for the girls out the back of their store about once a month oh that's yeah, fantastic so that's really good glow, which is really exceptional just to make sure they look after their bikes properly yeah. and the girls can come in and he'll let us have a look over their bike and have a chat to them about it plus give them all the basic lesson on what to do so that's mm. oh that's really good special. awesome awesome and he does that free Absolutely. Yeah, he does it for that's us. wonderful that's really well, good it? look it's a good relationship uh, look hey it brings somebody to their store mm. Right, they absolutely you know, they yeah. business is hard these days. So you know, mm. but she's also the one person here who now has our glow, you know, our club merchandise in stock. She does not make a profit of it off it. But mm. because I now work away, it's really hard for me to get get the girls their t shirts or whatever they need. So you know Absolutely. Oh that's me. wonderful. And, you know, hopefully yeah. in return um the girls will go down, take their husband and he'll buy himself a new shirt or jacket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's keep keeping the love in the Absolutely. group. That's fantastic. Yeah, wonderful. Okay, really serious Uh-oh. question now. <laughs> if you could have any bike, so money's not an option, size is not a, a worry or anything like that, what would you have and why? Well, yeah. So I see that size is always an option when you're my size. Um, <laughs> oh, that's really, look, I've always been in love with the Indians. Um, mm-hmm. However, for the, the, I was looking at the Scout when I was looking at the Vulcan, but the Vulcan I felt had mm-hmm. a lot more features um, and was half the price. So at that mm. time, but some of those bigger Indians are just beautiful. I just think they are magnificent. Mm. They really are. So if mm. I was to money in my size not being an option, that's probably where I'd mm-hmm. go. Yeah, yeah, nice. And I like the cruises. Nice. I'm not a racer type of girl. So, um, mm. you know, I, I, well, yeah. I wish I could, but it's, again, I suppose it's just a size thing. So Yeah, absolutely. Oh, thank you. Um, so tell us a little bit more about the kind of riding that you do over in Western Australia. I know you've done a little bit of riding over our side recently, but where you are, what's what sort of riding do you do mostly? Well, in WA, it's a long way to anywhere. So we do mm-hmm. lots of long distance riding. I was for a little while working in Kalgoorlie and living in Perth. So uh, when I first got into mining, so I was riding to work and back out once a week. Uh, that was 550. Mm-hmm. How far is that? 550 kilometres to work. 
Wow. An invertebrate. So bum. And, well, people <laughs> would say to me, like, you're crazy. And I'm like, it's a lovely ride. It's, you know, it, it's easy, it's cruisy. It is a bit of a long, straight, boring road. You know, but but so I've done that for work. I, I don't own a car, so I do ride around town a lot. But we do lots of weekend trips away. Uh, and you could probably, even our average weekend ride, if we just go and do a run around the dams or through the hills, it's usually two to 300 kilometres uh, for a Saturday, okay. yep. Sunday ride. When we go away, we often head down to Margaret River for overnighters. Mm. So... Nice. A couple hundred places. And is that – what sort of roads are they? Are they hilly? Are they windy? I don't know a lot about Western Australia and I'd, I'd love to get over there, but, yeah, what sort of roads are you riding? Around the coast, um, we, it, it's very, very flat and we've got like this run of hills that runs right down the coastline of WA. Like I don't know, but it's as if once upon a time that was the edge of the ocean and from there on out it's flat, right? So that's okay. – I think is probably, yeah, with the land base. So down here where we are in the city area and right down the coast down south to Mega River, you can stay on the flat come all the way. Okay. Then you get into that run of hills and it runs right down the coast and a little bit behind that there's just some amazing roads. And because we don't mm. have a lot of heavy rain, actually just a lot of rain at all in WA, our roads are incredible. They are by far, I think, the best mm. in the country. I've been all over Australia. Um, and I think they are by far the best maintained roads. We, mm. we don't get potholes because we don't get those big storms. And mm. like oh gosh, you're lucky. Our, our roads are yeah. exceptional. And like you said, we've just been over east. There was four of us that went, and um, coming back here, these roads are a relief because of you've got yeah. where you are. There's just so much damage after the storms and everything at the moment. Mm, there is. And, look, I've heard so many stories of riders that have um, had some really bad injuries and damage to their bikes. Only recently one of the guys that I ride with um, who's in our young social riders group was coming back from a ride and hit a pothole and fractured his back. Yeah. So, And he's been in hospital for a week and now rehabilitating. So, And and that was actually from avoiding a pothole. He actually hit another one. So they're just unavoidable in some areas. And, and these are really experienced riders that are having this these injuries and damages made to their bikes from the potholes. So the it's um, so sad, really sad. Supposed to yeah, exactly. They don't have the infrastructure. They don't have the staff. And there's just mm. such, such widespread damage to the roads yeah, so so there's you know it's, we don't get rain here so our roads are awesome <laughs> mm. oh, i'm coming over there <laughs> coming over there oh you're so lucky that's wonderful yeah they're long they're straight but they're quite flowing we've got our run of hills which mm. we dive into every weekend where we can around our dams and everything nice. um yeah and we do our really mm. long rides like in about or six that's weeks i think there's 47 of us going for a ride to Esperance. So that's a neat little uh, oh, awesome. uh, seven, 800 kilometres. Nice. And how many girls and guys do you normally get on the rides that you do? Um, I suppose if we do social rides, we'll usually get 20 to 40 just around town. But when we do our away overnight events, I usually get about 50 people attending the overnight events. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, that's that's so fantastic. That's when you know you've built <laughs> That's a really, community. really good. And Absolutely. Something yeah, something for us to inspire to over here for sure. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, what's the furthest you've ridden? What's the longest ride you've ever done? Well, I'd probably have to say Esperance. Um, yeah. Esperance from Perth. So, you know, I think like off the top of my head, it's around the 800-kilometre mark. Um, and yeah. I've done that twice, so this will be my third trip coming up. And do you do that over a couple of days or do you do it all in one day? Nope. I make everybody meet at the same time at 6 a.m. <laughs> yeah. But we, we only yeah. ever ride an hour and a half maximum because yeah. you know, it can be quite hot out here, of course, so you've got to stay hydrated. Yep. Um, you know, those bikes with smaller tanks have to be looked after. And mm. WA is much more, none of their towns are more than an hour and a half apart. So, yeah. you know, we okay. stop, we get a drink, That's really go, good. refresh, get going again and very scheduled yeah. breaks and everything else. But we can leave here at 6 in the morning and be there comfortably refreshed at 4.30 in the afternoon. Just oh, that's great. Just an ice cold beverage. 
Nice. Because it, it can be intimidating when you talk to a new rider or someone who's thinking about taking up riding, you know, the, the length of time that you ride or the distance that you ride. I always say to them, but don't forget, we stop every hour. You know, we we have a toilet break, we grab a coffee. It's not like we're riding that distance all in one go because that would just be silly, yeah, really. Um, you pace it and you, you, you sort of time your ride to the ability of the slowest rider. Yeah. Um, so you all stick together, you support each other and, and you know, you make that rider a, a memorable one in a positive way, not one that sort of turns people I think off you've also, riding with you. Yeah, you've got to look at the ride you're doing. I mean, I've done some rides where I've said this ride is not learner friendly uh, and mm. I've done other rides where this is newbie learner friendly. So you do have to look at your That's individual good. ride. I mean, the, the ride to Esperance is very long, very straight roads, but it's going to be the whole way at 110. You know, mm. you won't get there on time. So exactly. I wouldn't yeah. call it learner-friendly, but new rider-friendly is fine mm. as long as you've done the highway. You'll keep up because you've seen yeah. it. Especially having yeah. a distance, you settle into that speed very quickly and it starts to feel a bit slow, but mm. – uh, of those yes. really straight roads, yes. you know, but it's quite spectacular. Yeah. There, out back in WA on those trips, it's so spectacular. You go across the big salt lakes. Yeah, WA is beautiful. Yeah, no, nice. in its barrenness. <laughs> Thinking about all the rides that you could do throughout the whole world, and I know you've got some planned stuff coming up. What is your dream ride? Just to love Australia. I think. Look. Yeah. Yep. I've never really desired to travel overseas because I think Australia is so exceptional and it's so beautiful and we are so lucky to live in this country. Uh, I know a lot of people mm. do want to travel and everything else and I just think, you know, Europe will survive without me. It doesn't particularly need me. Yep. It'll be fine. <laughs> but mm. I, could go for, I could go for a ride for a couple of hours and put my tent up beside a creek and mm. read a book and listen to the water, and I don't think life gets any better than that. Yeah, yeah we're pretty yeah. lucky, aren't we? My retirement plan is yeah. like Australia, don't you worry. All in one go or in bits and pieces? Uh, I, I intend it to take a very long time. Thank you for yeah. sharing that. One of the questions I want to ask is about some rides that you've had. I'm going to give you the option. So I, I uh, proudest, funniest, happiest, scariest. What what ride stands out to you the most in your riding oh, that one's um, adventures? That's super easy. Mm -hmm. When we started our yeah. group glow, which stands for Gorgeous Ladies on Wheels, um, we had our first birthday ride, and I glow was I suppose kind of by accident. I never knew it was going to be this bigger and whatever, we wanted to bring girls together to ride with a bit of freedom and um, no idea of how this was going to turn out and how important it was going to become to people or how uh, women were going to be inspired and how we would meet these women who didn't have the confidence or had, had their licence but nobody to ride with, you know. So we started bringing all these people together and it grew, it grew. And when we got to our first birthday, we did a very simple ride and it's a ride we often do. We leave from Optus Stadium in Perth. We go up the freeway north to the coastline and you can follow the coastline all the way down in WA. It's just spectacular. So we do this lovely coastal cruise and then we all go out to dinner in Fremantle. And we got down to Fremantle for dinner and I watched everybody and I turned around to my biker bestie and I burst into tears and I went, oh, my God, we did it. We did it. Look, we did it. I can't mm. believe we did this. And she's grabbed mm. me and raced me off to the bathroom to dry my tears because um, I was there to inspire people not to cry. <laughs> <laughs> so but I just – Oh, come on. I, that's a pretty good emotion. <laughs> by the emotion of, of yeah. watching these women and, and – and these new friendships and these new connections and seeing mm. smiles and seeing these women feel special was just, oh, yep. it was really overwhelming. So that would be my one standout. It was a really mm. short little ride, but it was the moment mm -hmm. I said, wow, look what we've done. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love that story. It's given me goosebumps and, yeah, it's, oh, you're an amazing person. I'm not surprised you felt like that. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I do not um, see it as being me. This is the thing. It's you girls. Mm. I'm, I'm nothing. I'm just this person who has these hyperactive ideas. But it's these <laughs> women that have come together and they've looked after each other 
And people mm. often say to me, oh, what you've done is great. And well, I didn't do it. You girls did it. I just gave you a mm. place to you do it. You started it, though. You a place to do it. Yeah, exactly. Girls, and that's amazing. look after each other. You support each other. Mm. Um, you take out the learners. And, and without all that happening, we'd be nothing. It's a pretty amazing family when you think about it. Um, I know I've looked back. I I started road riding like 20 years ago, but it's only been the last couple of years that I've actually, you know, got out there and, and joined groups and participated in rides. When I when I first started riding, there wasn't really anything. Um, it was just me going out and doing it and, and maybe an, another couple of girlfriends. Um, I, I got my licence with, with a friend and it would just be the two of us. I, you know, I wouldn't ride with my husband very often because I felt overwhelmed riding with him. Um, but I look back now and the last couple of years in the friendships and family that I've made from riding that I would never ever have dreamed possible without you know glow and and without social media Absolutely. um it's just yeah and and yeah like you said it's supportive like-minded people that are just amazing and motivating and they are there just so so other. supportive and they're just there to go, yeah we've yeah. got this one common love and i would never have met you otherwise yep. But do you want to do this? Yep. Do you want to hang out with me? Let's go together and let's have a bedroom. Yeah. Because you know what? We've only got one go at this. We have to make the best of it. Yep. We have to be happy. Absolutely. We have to smile. We have to go on adventures. Yeah, we have to just make the best of mm. every moment. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, riding is actually a really cheap form of adventure. You know, a bit of fuel, a motorbike that suits you and the world is your oyster. Absolutely. You know, you can go as far as you want to go or as, cl- you know, close as you want to go. It's you just, just all yeah, it's such a, an awesome back. thing to yep. do. Get all you do on yep. and come back. <laughs> Not that I'm a camper, but I'd, <laughs> I would do it if I had to. <laughs> you can be gone for a whole year. Yeah. I know. We, yes, it's just yeah, wow. We've got one of the girls from WA who got her dirt bike and she rode it around Australia and she's Amazing. Oh, I've got a feeling you'll probably meet her. Wow. I've got a feeling you might. But of course. She is excellent. Such an inspiration to so many women because she was a new rider. And she went yeah, no, good on her. an adventure. Look at look at what this has yep. given me, this freedom and yeah, so and yep. we all followed her adventures. She documented them so well. She was such an inspiration to so many women. But oh, I don't, look, on as her. much as she inspired me, you still never get me on the dirt. End of story. Um <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm a bit old yeah, for that now. I like my tar. <laughs> Although, yeah, 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 I do like the tar as well. Oh, thank you, Kathy, for sharing that. Um, what's tri- writing taught you about yourself? That I've got more to give, I think. Yep. Because the bike riding, oh, look, I'm not a solo kind of person. I'm a very, very social personality. And I met these mm-hmm. people and I made these friendships. And I, I have always been a, a bit of – my only friends were my children's best friend's parents. They were almost my, – mm-hmm. my whole world was about my kids. And then I mm-hmm. made it about me and I was all alone in the world over here and um, very insecure. And I suddenly found out that mm-hmm. all this – over parenting that I gave my kids, like we're going boating, we're going camping, we're going to archery, we're on adventures. I was always nonstop on adventures with my children. Well, they grew up and left me. Mm. So then I found all these women and mm. I picked on them instead. So <laughs> <laughs> now they're going yep. on my adventure. Wow. And I found out I, I had this ability to inspire people. Well, I didn't know that about myself. Um, mm. And I, I do, I have this way to bring people together and, if you know you've got that, you've got to use that. You've got to make other people's life better. And by doing that, it makes your own Absolutely. life better. I, I'm so overwhelmed with the love that I have from my friends mm. and this world that we've created. And what it's done for me is, I don't know, it's, it's made me proud of myself. Mm. Um, but I'm more proud Absolutely. of the girls yep. and what they've ever achieved. So. Mm. Yeah, so your your support and and you getting these people together is re- really bringing out these girls and the the writing that they're doing and and giving them that extra little bit in life um, that they may not have had if they didn't have that extra support well, to do a it. A lot of women didn't know yeah. who writes. You know, it was so cool. yeah, had, yeah. Now you know what we do in our group. We've provided a safe place for women to connect online, so they can chat, they can be vulnerable um, with no fear of any cyberbullying or anything like that, because it's not mm. a public forum. It's mm. a very safe place. But when we ride, we ride with the guys. 
We don't exclude them yep. from what we do. Yep. We've just given the women a safe place to connect and make these yep. friends. And yes. When they go riding, it's up to them who they want to ride with. But the thing is, the, the men that ride with us are the ones that we want to ride with us. So we don't end up with, and mm. no guys, they're just there to check out the girls and try and crack onto them or check out, mm. you know. Um, no idiots yeah. on dirt bikes, chuck and wheelies, thinking that we think he's cool because we definitely don't. Um, yeah. <laughs> Although that is pretty impressive sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, <laughs> Kathy. I'm impressed when they do a lot of Harley, all right, but not the dead bikes. Anyway, but so, yeah, we, we gave these girls a safe place, but we ride with the guys. Mm. Thinking about your bike um, and thinking about the gear that you ride, um, I know it's really hard sometimes to get the right riding gear for women. Yeah. Um, and I'm finding that there's more and more availability coming because there is more and more women riding. But tell us a little bit about the gear that you use and wear and why you wear it. And maybe you can give some suggestions as well of of where we can actually access really good riding gear. Well, I think in a way you've got to say I haven't been – I've only been riding again for four years, so I'm probably Mm -hmm. not the best, but – one thing I do do in WA is I use this, you know, we've got some big stores here now, but I tend to still stick with the locals, the ones who've always looked after the locals, the smaller stores um, yep. with what they wear. But I wear my Kevlar jeans. Um, mm-hmm. I'm a big, mm-hmm. big believer in Kevlar because um, I used to use it for glassing to build boats, but that was in another lifetime. Mm-hmm. So Kevlar might stop you breaking anything, but it will stop you ripping your skin off if you come down. Mm. So generally I would wear that and my leather jacket. I love my leather jacket. It took yep. me a long time to find the right one, but oh, totally in love with my leather jacket now. Um, oh, very good. In winter I've got a dry rider outfit and I think dry rider do make really amazing clothes. However, I think it's a name, not a function. So I still mm-hmm. recommend taking my weather gear um, because I've yeah. had my dry rider gear and got saturated. That. Mm. So it's okay. super warm and it's quilted. Um, so that's my winter wear. Um, and I also do because it does get very cold here in Perth. So we can get right down towards mm-hmm. the, you know, two degrees and that through winter. Um, and I've got mm. my heated vest that I wear underneath as well. Uh, where did you get your heated vest from? I got it online from Aurora, O-R-O, I think the brand is. Um, and okay. And it's brilliant. It really is brilliant. Okay. Oh and so once I got that, I actually realised because where I work is is further down south, down near Esperance, and so I actually take mm-hmm. it in winter because we start work at you know four or five in the morning and it's zero mm. degrees. So I'm wearing my motorbike gear to work. Fair yeah. enough. Very good. Okay. Yeah. Well, look, it gets to about minus four here, um, but the the winter months, Bruce goes in the garage and has a bit of a rest because it's just way too cold here to ride. But um, the heated stuff, I think, is really coming ahead leaps and bounds. Um, um, that's why I was really interested in, in the brand that you wear because um, it's just becoming more and more available. Well, it was recommended to um, me, and which is why I chose that one because somebody else had it. They used it. They were happy, so why got yep. it? And then I yep. got it for my partner. He's really happy with his as well. It's, yeah, made a big difference. So, cool. Yeah, I bet. Because if you're warm, you know, everything's okay. I don't know how many times I've got off my bike and I couldn't even talk because it was so cold. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Thinking about your bike too, is there anything specifically that you couldn't live without on your bike and why? Uh, I couldn't live without my quad lock. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, quad locks are awesome. <laughs> I can get lost going around the corner. So, um, yep. now, actually, you know, two things. I can't live without my quad lock and I can't live without my center. So I put, yeah. I put maps on no matter where I go. I put maps on. I've got my center. I've got my music. My maps will come over the top. And if I'm not sure because in a city of course streets close to give up, then right in front of me on the front of my bike, there is my map on a screen mm. and I know yep. that I go, oh, it's not this turn, it's that one. So, yeah, my yep. quad lock and my centre, two things I can't live without on my bike. And awesome. I have to have my music. You have to have your music when you ride. It's part of the whole. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to have that right playlist as well to motivate you when you're yeah, riding. It is. It's, yeah, it's, that playlist is the key. I, I, <laughs> music is my life. I've got my <laughs> 80s blue light disco happening in my helmet. 
So. <laughs> ah, awesome. Do you, do you actually dance when you stop? Yes. And waiting at lights and stuff. Um, yeah, and, I do too. And girls who will tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I love that. Um, and what tips or advice would you give to new writers or someone who's wanting to write? Um, don't expect too much from yourself. Take your time. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the systems are different all around Australia, like how you get your licence. So I think where you are, they've got to go and do a course, whereas over in WA, they just get their mm-hmm. learners and then find somebody to teach them. And I do say to, I say mm-hmm. to people, I, I will, and we shadow learners, so shadowing them is like mm-hmm. a learner going out in a car. They've got to have a licence driver with them. So on the motorbikes, uh, you go out on, with your learners, you've got to have a licence rider with you. So... Mm-hmm. Um, mm. I always is that tough is that tough to find somebody to no, shadow you so though gr- well look it can be at no. certain times because of work and shifts and everything else and kids yeah but it's just you I say to people have you had lessons because I'm not going to shadow a learner that hasn't had lessons right mm. this is my life my mm. license my bike I don't want somebody dropping a mm. bike on mine or anything else I think if they want people mm. to freely give their time and help them then what a shadow is there to do is to help you get experience with what the instructor has taught you so the instructor mm. will teach you how to mm. ride how to ride safely the road rules we're not instructors we start giving out that information that's a whole like a little bit of a legal mindset yeah so we should have yeah been, what we should be doing as shadows is giving those learners road time to practice what the instructors have taught them so for me, yeah. I will take yeah. them out if they've had lessons and if they're insured because if they drop their yeah. bike on mine, then I don't want to have to be the one paying the excess. So that's Yeah, that's it's a big responsibility. Yeah, it's not much to ask and I think if you want somebody to donate their time to you being a newbie, then that's not a lot to ask. Yep. And look, that's the beauty, I suppose, of having social media and and groups like Glow where people can go to, especially female writers, to ask for support and not feel overwhelmed, you know, have that support. Um, Look, where we are here, where I am, I mean, if you're 100 kilometres away from the nearest um, training facility, you don't have to do the the learner's course you can just get your learner's license and teach yourself so there's there's it's really difficult I've got a friend who's just got her L's and she doesn't meet that requirement of having to do the course and building her confidence um, is really a focus for me but having the the initial fundamentals and learning those basic skills is just so important before you get on the road they offer over east are brilliant my son did that absolutely wa so he did the course over there before he came over um and what he's told Mm. me about it what other people have told me i think should be implemented in wa because i think that way nobody gets on Mm. the road at all until they've covered the basics they've been taught the basics yeah they're safe you know yeah, yeah it's just super important to be safe mm. to ride like everybody's out to get you. Um, yeah, and it's bizarre how every state's that little bit different, it is. isn't it? It's really country. strange. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that's something we can that's work on. <laughs> oh, dear. Now, I suppose, there's an opportunity for you to talk about Glow, Gorgeous Ladies on Wheels, how it started, what it's all about, where you're going, um, how people can join. Tell us a little bit sure. about that. Well, like I said um, earlier, Glow was an idea that came to me when I was writing with the learner group and a few of the ladies are having a bit of chat next. And um, so I started coming up with this idea of having a Facebook group that didn't require memberships or anything else, just a social writing group that just for women. So just a safe place for women was mm-hmm. was the thought in my head. Um, we did a few brainstorming sessions with a couple of the other girls and uh, was it me that came up with the name Glow? It was another one of the ladies. And oh. we, when she said it, we all just went, oh, that's it. That's it. That's the name. <laughs> I think before that we were Grip, girls riding in Perth. <laughs> so, okay. So because we were with Glow, um, you know, that's now able to be used nationally and mm. Glow is now in the ACT and uh, in New South Wales. So every state have got mm. their girl writing groups, right? They're, they're in those mm. bigger cities and bigger areas. So what I'm seeing Glow do over there is bring more of those country girls together and that's mm. what we're about. We're not about how many members we can get, um, you know, we're not about trying to grow huge. We're about 
bringing women together and giving them something special, giving them something that's theirs mm. that they can be proud of, that they can freely participate in. So anyway, so I, I came up with the whole concept. I built sort of glow in the background. I brought these girls together and said, you're going to help me run this. And um, we sent out a pile of join requests to all the girls we knew that ride. Straight away I started going, well, let's do this, let's do this. And we, we've we got a, a guy, a friend of ours who rides, came up with our logo for us. And we had to go sort of back and forth quite a lot on that before we got that perfect. And mm-hmm. then somebody went, well, where's our T-shirt? So then that happened and somebody goes, oh, well, we need a hoodie. And I went, well, okay, so the hoodie happened. <laughs> and then everything, I don't know, it just got out of control and the group kept growing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was super exciting. And it just mm. grew and grew and I, I'm like a little bit hyperactive. So I'm like, right, we're doing this, right, we're doing that, right, we're going away on adventures. And um, I don't know, it just took on a life of its yeah. own. It's now at the point where um, other women create events. There's just always something on in the events tab. It, mm. it never stops. And now we've come up with our biggest plan yet. And next year, mm-hmm. in September 2024, we're going to America so mm-hmm. we, so exciting yeah, absolutely uh we have i think we've got about 20 so far and this again it's not exclusively female so we've got a lot of the partners coming as well um but we've got an That's american great. girl in the group who's moved here and so she said oh, i'd love to take you all around you know my hometown and we went oh great yeah let's oh mm. oh really oh really yeah. oh and then yeah. it just it became this grand plan so yeah, we've, we're going to combine that with uh, Babes Ride Out, which is the biggest all-female American motorbike rally. So it's time wow. to work with that. Yeah. Go to the Grand Canyon and Las Vegas. We're gonna, we want to ride down the strip of La, Las Vegas at sunset. And somebody's got a video there. Oh, wow. I just oh. got goosebumps. I get goosebumps <laughs> a lot. <laughs> the Aussie girls on. Oh, that's awesome. You know, it's going to be great. The Aussie girls on a bunch of Harleys riding on the yeah. wrong side of the road. What could possibly Love go it. wrong? <laughs> oh, now you've jinxed everyone. <laughs> no. no, oh, that is so exciting. Um, and what a bucket list adventure. Absolutely, it's really big. But we've got something yeah. before then. Of course, I'd like to, in, in about six weeks, yep. we've got our trip down to Esperance. Um, mm-hmm. And that's probably. And the International Female Writers' Day in May, That's there's right. always events that Glow put on for Absolutely, that. Absolutely. Yeah. That, so, that, that one's super yeah, wonderful. exciting. And I think our first big ride we did mm. for that over here, we I just went, right, girls dressing up, oh, I want those tutus. So you had, you know, I think yep. we had nearly 80 bikes, come, or about 70 bikes come out, and all the girls are wearing tutus and everything else. We're just going, yeah, we're female, we're awesome, and we're riding these bikes. <laughs> How good is life? Um now, yeah. the guys, however, were our corner markers and the guys are so inspired by the friendships that they've made through this. I had big, tough mm. bikies on Harleys with great big beards standing on a corner in their tutus going, turn that way. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yeah, Love and it. you go around the next yeah. corner and, and there's a guy with his fairy wings on. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. I love it. Awesome. Yeah. So h- how do women or find out about Glow? Do they just do hop onto Facebook, hop on Facebook. And, and pop yeah. in Glow? Well, if you put in Glow, you'll probably get yeah. gorgeous ladies of wrestling. Um, I had no idea <laughs> okay. at the time that that was a thing. I certainly do now. So the best thing to probably put in is Glow gorgeous ladies on wheels. And it will come okay. up and you'll get your Thank ACT you. group, your New South Wales group, and your WA group. Yeah, so Wonderful. I think um, WA yeah. now is uh, about 1,150-ish 1, members at the moment. Uh, that's just oh, that's that's 1,150 women in WA living their best life. Absolutely. That. That's yeah. awesome. Um, yeah. And are you hoping to get Glow into the other states? Glow is not about growth. Glow is about okay. – it's about providing a, a special place for women. So, like, with New South Wales and ACT, this is where a lady approached me and said, watching what you do, so inspired by it, can I do it over here? And we had a good talk about okay. what Glow is about and how it's mm-hmm. – you know, about building the women up and like I always say to people, mm. everybody says to me all the time, thank you for Glow. And I was, no, 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 it's not me, it's you. 
right? Mm. I gave you the platform. You girls did it. I am my yeah. job here is to build these women up and to make these women confident and to, I don't know, just just yeah. inspire them. That's my job. I, I just see that as mm. yeah, and I get so much on doing that. Yeah. So, uh, and you've done such a great job. You. you really thank have. You. Yeah, you really yeah. have. And I've I've really enjoyed talking to you, Kathy. Thank you so much for your time. Looking forward to chatting with some other like-minded la- ladies. But um, yeah, I really thank you for for being our first interviewee. Nina, it's my absolute and... pleasure. And you know what? If we've inspired other women, then that's our job done, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for your time. I'll talk to you again right soon, back, my dear. Thanks so much for listening to this podcast. If you like what you heard, please tell your friends. If you or someone you know might like to be part of Wind Therapy episodes, email windtherapypodcast at yahoo.com. Special thanks to Megan Peacock for the awesome Wind Therapy illustration and to Zoe Francis for her technical support, direction and production of this podcast.